Wait, now you're live. What's up, YouTube friends? It's Caroline here, coming in live to you from San Francisco CrossFit, where I am joined by celebrity coach and movement genius. And good dancer. And good dancer, Kelly Starrett. Dr. Kelly Starrett is a New York Times best-selling author of the book, Becoming a Supple Leopard. He is the founder of Mobility Wad oh, wait, and co-founder co -founder of Mobility Wad. And he has revolutionized the way that athletes think of movement and performance. It is a great honor to be here with you today, Kelly. Thank you so, so very much. Always a pleasure. So I wanted to meet with Kelly today to talk a little bit about CrossFit and what really goes down inside the box. So Kelly, tell me, what exactly is CrossFit in your definition? We've been doing this a long time. Juliet and I started this thing 12 years ago, actually 14 years ago in our backyard. There were five CrossFits in the world. Only we, five? We are the 21st CrossFit on the planet Earth. So we've seen it all, we've been doing it all, and, and none of this was for our game. The reason we originally got interested in this is that we've been professional athletes, and now we're transitioning into being parents, we're transitioning, Juliet was an attorney, I was in grad school, and we recognized that our time was really being truncated in our ability to play and train at a high level. And one of the things that really spoke to us is that we found a discipline that forced us to be competent at the basic tenets of gymnastics, having basic core competencies around running and swimming, um, core competencies around sort of swinging kettlebells, moving dumbbells, and then layering in powerlifting and, 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 and Olympic lifting. What we found was that ultimately it created a, in a really time efficient way where we could pretend and still feel like we were high level athletes and training in the same way we did, but respected our time and was intellectually very curious that allowed us to recognize that we couldn't dump as much time in the training as we used to, but intellectually, the learning task was through the roof. So ultimately, what this boils down to is, here's a position that I should be able to do as a human, and then I can challenge that position with a little bit of load. So, hey, your squat looks great. Hold this 25-pound dumbbell, right? Now show me you can squat. Great. What happens if you run around and then squat? I challenge you with cardio respiratory demand. What if I say, hey, do 20 squats in a row, and now I've got metabolic demand. What if I say squat faster, now I'm adding speed. What if you and, and I are competing in a skill where we're like, you know, now we've got competition in there. What if I say, hey, I need you to do a burpee then. And now, all of a sudden, what we've done is we've taken exercise, which is fundamentally about training positions, and we have all these other variables to begin to scale it. So when people come in, what we're realizing is they don't have a very cogent movement system. They don't have um, a model for understanding human movement. What we've done is just said, do some soul cycle, go run a little bit, exercise harder, and then all of a sudden you end up you're like, whoa, is this isn't working, or my body hasn't changed, or I'm not getting stronger, or my, my 5K time isn't working, or I'm injured. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time where we've been able to really help people to see that this is what human beings should be able to do. And then you should be able to do that under all these different demands. And in a small group class setting, makes us accountable to each other. It's one of the places that where people have come, come and belong and become vulnerable because frankly, everyone sucks all the time. And you'll never ever, it never gets easier, right? It's all because the loads can get higher and the demands. But you know, what we're seeing is that Juliet's mom trains with us, 72 years old, right? And we have children train with us. And we're still working on the same things. Maybe the child doesn't squat as deep, doesn't use the same loads as a 72-year-old grandma. Mm -hmm. But uh, the idea here is that we can scale, we can, we can modify, and now we have a movement system that goes beyond yoga. Yoga is a complete movement practice. Pilates, movement practice. CrossFit, movement practice. So as long as you're regularly taking your body into positions that you, everyone should be able to do, put your arms over your head, be able to get up off the ground, close your ankle down, run, what you're going to start to see is that movement practice don't transcends exercise. It ends up being a way of maintaining your positions and becoming confident in the things that you should be able to be confident in. So what he's saying, guys, is that CrossFit itself is so much more than just a really great workout. It takes Oh, it's you. a side effect. It's, the workout is a side effect right. of this practice of training your body through all of these different basic human positions that can enhance your performance. And how you feel about yourself, right? Absolutely. And one of the things that's vital to understand is that this is a coached environment. So if you all of a sudden 
you go into any group fitness class and they jam up the music so loud that you can't hear the coach, your alarm should be going off. This is why yoga is not a fact, because it's one of the few taught and learned environments why Pilates matters, why any time when you have one-on-one -on -one coaching, you're getting feedback, and that's the learning environment in which it happens. So what's amazing about an environment, you know, we're very proud. The, the greatest thing about our gym is we have just such extraordinary coaching staff, long internships, long ramp-ups, very, very complex. We have professional coaches, not people who are teaching sort of as a hobby. And, and subsequently, we get people who can, we've had some athletes who have been with us for 13 years and continuing to make development practice in gains over 13 years. And, you know, it's, the problem is we all have egos. We all like to go fast. We all like to compete. We all like to put more weight on the bar. But understanding sort of the limits of our position, our capacities, you're going to find places and, and, and discover things about yourself you had no idea. And if you don't have pull-ups, that's okay. Most people didn't have pull-ups. Yeah. So the thing that I want my students to understand, because they come to group fitness, CrossFit is so much different than group fitness. Well, the group fitness has the right model. And fellowship, mm -hmm. I need to breathe hard. So the problem with something like yoga, potentially, is that your heart rate never gets up to 170, right? right? You know what you do when you go to a group fitness class? You die a cardiac death. I mean, it is such hard work. Yeah. So that's a component of it, right? One of the things we also need to do is we need to slow people down and put them under a little bit of load in a very controlled way. We need to teach them to get off the ground heavy. We need to learn to squat a little bit heavy. We need to press something over your head heavy. Very simple. And, and that's the central tenet of every good strength conditioning program. If you go to any university, if you go into any sort of high-level team training, you're going to see that the central components always remain stable. Our athletes need to be comfortable and stable, right? That's the definition of asana, right? Yeah. right? Stable and comfortable, that's what like downward dog asana means. And, um, you know, but underneath that, you're going to find that the roots of all of the fundamentals of strength and conditioning make the constituent parts of a CrossFit class. You've got to work on pull-ups. We've got to be able to be confident in push-ups. We've got to protect you and teach you how to respect your spine under load. And what we find then is that when you, instead of just sort of feeling like you have an uh, open bucket that you're just dumping fitness into forever, like, how fit am I in Zumba? Well, I'm like, look, I don't do Zumba to really get fit. I do Zumba because I'm dancing, I'm in a group of people, I'm sweating, I'm having fun. Fitness is sort of fifth on the list, mm -hmm. right? I, this allows us to systematically Program to people's needs so that they can do the things they're supposed to as humans. Program to people's needs so that they can do the things that they need to do as humans. One of my favorite quotes of his is we don't get, we don't train to get good at going to the gym. We train to get good in our lives, right? Yeah, but, uh, absolutely. And I'll say that we, we have wholeheartedly sort of forgotten why we're in the gym in the first place. Because gym culture is fantastic. It's so fun. I see my friends. I go to a class. I have Maybe the only unconditional positive regard I get for the entire week is in my, in my soul cycle instructor with me and I was like, good job, Kel. I was like, oh, she noticed me. But in the meantime, you know, this is a place to develop competency and get better at your world, whether it's about picking up your daughter or lifting that, helping a friend move or skiing more. We've got to be able to measure our success in the things that matter most. Maybe it's body composition originally, but ultimately we're going to get you because you're going to become curious about reclaiming the capacities that are innate to every human being. To live better in your life, not just in the gym. Yeah, and you know, we have four or five physical therapists on staff, you know, which, which means, you know, any one of our coaches is really good at spotting compensation. And that's the problem. I don't think we've done a very good job of giving people sort of benchmarks of human movement. So sort of imagine movement vital signs, right? Yep. What's normal blood pressure? 120 over 80. What's a good resting heart rate? Under 60, right? We know those things, but I'm like, what's normal for your squat? You're like, ah, uh, well, how do I test if my ankles are right? Well, uh, what's normal for overhead? And yet we're all out there swimming and doing sport, and yet don't have the requisite building blocks to be 100 years old and be injury proof, and more importantly, most people have no idea what they're capable of. They're right. capable of a lot more. Right. And that's, I think, why CrossFit personally has changed my life. Because it's allowed me to develop skill in movement. Not just moving hard, but moving well. That, and every, knowing everyone that. can crush themselves. We're, high intensity exercise is here to stay. Yep. Right? And what we know is that there are athletes amongst us who know how to suffer. 
And that is, and that has changed dramatically in ten years. We're seeing the amount of people who are comfortable with Barry's boot camp, you know, Soul Cycle, Orange Theory. Like people are bleeding out the eyes without the skin. Mm, yeah, and that's a huge problem because then they're getting injured and they're looking for ways to feel better. So wait, take me through like step by step. If I'm new, can, can I do CrossFit if I'm just like brand new to fitness? No, you can't. You are going to have to come through and meet with one of our coaches for a while. We're going to make sure we on-ramp you appropriately so you feel safe, you understand the language, you know how classes work. And there's a couple ways. Rarely you're going to be able to drop in. Would you drop into a master's yoga class? No. Like an advanced yoga class? No, you'd be like, a oh, beginner class. Well, we treat the same way around strength and conditioning. Like maybe you were an Olympic shot putter in high school and you have some of the central tenets of Olympic lifting and marble because you've had some formal training. But most of us have never been exposed to the formal languages of what it's like to use a barbell. Yep. It's very scary. You know, if I hand you a dumbbell, you're like, okay, I hand you a barbell, a really skinny dumbbell, and you're like, what is this? So what we're trying to do is saying, yes, the programming is appropriate for everyone. And we, we put you on a slow gradient coming out. And you're, I guarantee you, you're going to get a good workout and have a ton of fun and be really surprised about how much you don't know and what you can already do and how much better you can get. But... We're not, no one's ever going to drop in and just, you know, plug in. When we started this thing, you know, 14 years ago, we would crush everyone in our backyard. And our friends were like, this is the worst thing ever. And we're like, isn't it great? And we didn't know how a way to, like, on-ramp people. Now we're much more sophisticated and a little bit more nuanced about bringing people into the fold. So give me, like, an insider. What really goes down? If I'm going to come to CrossFit, like, step by step, start to finish, what happens in a class? Well, you know, one of the things that's going to happen is that you're going to get an email from our staff that says, come on in, let's talk about the program. So we do what we call our no-sweat intro. And then it's a chance for us to talk about what your needs are and what you're really thinking about so that your expectations are correct. you come through an on-ramp program. Mm -hmm. And then what you're going to see is in our classic CrossFit conditioning class, or which is what we call general physical preparedness. But if you come through this, you know, our old model of, of high-level strength conditioning is this really periodized model, which is about working with high-level athletes in the Olympics. Now we're realizing that we should be developing capacity simultaneously year-round, a much more integrated approach. We can get you stronger, we can get you fitter, we can get you more metabolically more sort of on for all of these things. But I can work on in a way. So I'm never going to be the best 10 k CrossFit unless I go run and specialize in 10 ks I'm never going to be the best you know, power lifter in CrossFit. But developing these broad capacities and broad abilities translate well to all these other sports. So what we're thinking is, is, hey, how do I become a really competent generalist? You know, and people are like, well, what does that mean? And we're like, well, can you do 10 perfect push-ups? Do you have five strict pull-ups? Those are really low benchmarks. If you're pressing your body weight overhead or deadlifting something heavy off the ground, let's begin with the basic language. You'll come in, you'll always get a thorough warm-up where we're taking the body through its full range of motion, we're getting you hot and sweaty, teaching you skills. There's usually going to be a, a more technical lift or technical component. And then we're always going to do some conditioning because we believe that well-conditioned athletes rule the world. So no matter what, we're, we respect your aerobic capacity and your ability to suffer, but in good positions, right? If you want to be a mouse, like we can put you on the treadmill or a bike and you can crush yourself, which is an important way to develop car respiratory fitness. Comma, I'm interested that you can keep your heart rate high and still control your leg while you're squatting. Yes, that is and that's hard. Thing. And that's what I love about CrossFit is the first piece of it is all about skill and skill development and practicing that and it's a constant evolution you're never done you're always learning how to move better that's right. and then you get a really kick butt workout and it's not just heavy lifting right no. there it's cardio there's rowing there's rope climbing there's all sorts jump of roping jump roping yeah, you should see when we when we're really being mean we pull out our double dutch ropes oh. and we just crush people with the double dutch Right. So, I mean, it's so much more than just what people think it is. So what, what's happened is we've seen CrossFit on the internet where people are doing crazy things, gymnastics, heavy lifting. You're like, I can't relate to that at all. Right. But imagine, again, trying to be stable and comfortable under a diverse set of conditions. And, and what's really nice, for example, is that my wife has what we call exercise ADD. And that if I ask her to do the same program, at, like she's just going to be like, I'm out. Yep. And what's nice is that the principles remain the same, movements are the same, but instead of front squatting, we're going to hold something in our chest. Instead of holding in our chest, we're going to back squat, or we're going to put something over our head. Or, you know, there's many ways to hinge 
And then there's many ways to change that. So every day, the stimulus is always different. So every time you come in, you'd be like, wow, I have never rode and then done a wall ball before. That was terrible, right? And then in the best way. That's right. You know, or you're like, you know, hey, I've never kettlebelled and run and done that couple. And what you're going to find is that by us changing the stimulus, you're going to be interested. And there's so many skills to develop. Like, you can do this for 10 years, and then you'll be a good beginner. Yeah, so it's always changing, which means you're always growing, always being challenged. Challenge, not eating plateaus, not seeing repetitive stress injuries, which is huge. That's right, that's right. And always just continually feeling inspired by what you're doing with your body, which is huge. Well, and I'll tell you, you know, when you come up here and we've had some athletes, you know, there's some sleeper athletes that are right, you know, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, that, that middle aged mom of three is crushing me. And, uh, you know, we used to in CrossFit write every score on the board, we quantified everything, and now we're, we're, what we find is that people are highly motivated. There's usually a clock involved in terms of time domain. People are highly motivated by watching other people around them. Yep. And training alongside someone. If you and I are training and I see you working really hard, I'm not going to stop. Yep. It just, it really is, it's extraordinary. And this is what we're finding is one of the few places where people can be vulnerable. You can be, you know, learn, you don't have to be an expert. You can come in, you can be vulnerable, you can be in a, an instructional environment. And then you can really come up and be like, wow, I, I don't know if I can do that. And you're going to confront a whole bunch of fears. And that's just based into the exercises that we're doing. It's just fun. Yeah. And there's this thing, and I'm going to swear on YouTube here, but we call it dicking around, messing around. And the idea is, we have sucked a lot of the joy out of training together as humans, and we're trying to put that joy back into training. We're putting the joy back into training together as humans. I love that. So wait, what's the one myth or truth that you want to shed the light on for CrossFit? Like, what's one thing that people need to stop believing about CrossFit and start knowing about CrossFit? Uh, you know, there is a myth that, uh, you know, sometimes people are concerned that you're going to get hurt. But what I'll tell you is... If you look at the run, running related injury statistics, 80% of runners are injured in a year. And what I'll say is that this is the safest place to be. If your ego gets in the way, there was sports medicine long before there was CrossFit, right? And people were going to see their doctors for all kinds of movement related problems. We don't have a solution to show people how to eat, to show people how to train until now we've really started to see that in an integrated whole. The other thing is that there's a, there's an idea that it's not for everyone, and that is just further from the truth. You know, we change the domains, we protect ranges, we develop competencies, and what we think is that this is going to be a long game goal. You will continue to be challenged for, for a lifetime, and that's, that's what's really interesting about this. And that's what's cool. I see people with injuries in here. I see all ages in here. We have the swim team that comes in. The high school swim team comes into this gym. I mean, ages, injuries, abilities, everybody is welcome. And it's not intimidating. And yes, it's hard, but it's fun and it's supportive. And it's just one of the most powerful things that I think you should experience. Kelly Surratt, I just, I appreciate you so pleasure, much. Pleasure, pleasure. For coming on today, there's so much more that you can learn from this man, and I'll include all of the links for San Francisco CrossFit, Mobility Wad, and Kelly Surratt in the description below. So whether you're watching the rebroadcast or tuning in live right now, you can find more on this man and this beautiful place. I can't thank you enough for today. Thank you. you guys keep training and being awesome, and we'll see you again soon.